rating, plus 70 plus X. Site of last SCP-1533 event. Item hash, SCP-1533. Object class, Euclid. Special, containment procedures. The individuals that collectively comprise SCP-1533 are to be confined to a 10 by 10 by 10 meter cell in sight. Armed guard is to be posted outside of the containment chamber at all times. Should SCP-1533 attempt to escape, firearms are capable of subduing the entities only temporarily. Requests of a material nature, whether it be of books, film, music, or other media, are to be strictly denied and any personnel discovered smuggling paraphernalia into SCP-1533's cell will be removed from the holding facility and relocated per administrative orders. Under no circumstances are personnel allowed to fraternize with each other or the collective itself. All agents are to assume a neutral expression and allowed to only make short declarative statements in the presence of the holding cell. Any individualizing actions, social flourishes, or other interactions that go beyond the communication of simple directives will be added to SCP-1533's behavior pool and be utilized to facilitate an escape. During the normally scheduled SCP-1533 event day, 12, 12, D-class exhibiting symptoms of autism spectrum disorders or to socialize with the collective in order to stunt SCP-1533's social growth. The desocializing of SCP-1533 must occur under the supervision of armed guards. Armed personnel are tasked with closely observing for any signs of the collective attempting to socialize the D-class for its own benefit, or any other anomalies. Operatives are prohibited from interacting with SCP-1533 in any way beyond making eye contact. Description SCP-1533 is the designation for an aggregate intelligence of unknown nature with command over superficially human entities and their personalities. Instances of SCP-1533 only manifest as social gatherings of variable nature organized and attended by its comprising individuals. The SCP-1533 events occur at monthly intervals within a 50-50 mile radius of the previous event's location, and are generally gatherings such as house parties or holiday mixers. However, SCP-1533 has not been known to organize events that rely on the attendees knowing each other prior to the gathering, such as family reunions or birthday parties. The individuals that comprise SCP-1533 possess the ability to mimic the behaviors of human subjects. They have interacted with in the past. Observed behaviors enter a collective database at the disposal of SCP-1533 which are then distributed across the entities differently for each event. Each entity receives a personality schema consisting of a host of behaviors, skills, and personal attributes in order to perform a specific social role. The individuals need only to be aiders and direct line of sight of an action to absorb it, remaining sensitive to social cues even when apparently intoxicated. Specific examples of modifiable attributes include personal idiosyncrasies, inflection and cadence of voice, physical expertise in a sport or activity, oratory skill, the demeanor of an individual, and even sense of humor. The ease by which SCP-1533 is able to model persuasive personalities is a sign of its growing social competency. The process is analogous to natural selection, in that there is a preference for favorable behaviors that will better endear it to future victims, and those that discomfort or otherwise turn off attendees are discarded. As a consequence, the individuals have progressed from exhibiting symptoms of low-grade autism spectrum disorder to becoming a highly alluring and dangerous group of individuals. Outside of expanding its data pool, SCP-1533 exists only to exercise its power of manipulation over human beings. This can range from challenging a target's self-identity by persuading them to agree with obscene 
and untenable point of view, to more indirect methods that inflict emotional and physical harm on subjects. The collective has shown a preference for employing charismatic personalities to captivate human targets into threatening the integrity of close friendships and intimate relationships. See Personality List. The collective competes against itself for the emotional dominance of their guests, and those personalities with the most success have begun to exhibit some semblance of autonomy by brandishing tattoos and other symbols of status to denote their rank. The beings exert such a profound effect on human beings that Foundation operatives routinely recover letters and personal belongings addressed to SCP-1533 sent by past guests to previous event sites. The entities have also attempted to bribe personnel by promising to secure them the love and adoration of specific persons in their lives, such as peers or romantic interests. SCP-1533's personalities have developed an aptitude for reading body language and facial expressions that currently exceeds Foundation understanding. Removing those personnel prone to the collective's manipulations has also proved troublesome, as it has only served to bolster SCP-1533's confidence in its own abilities. As of Operatives are to be assigned masks to wear so as to limit the social that SCP-1533 assimilates with every encounter, plus personality list. Hide, personality list. The following is a list of the most prominent personalities utilized by SCP-1533 to dominate human beings. It is rare that more than one personality will select the same target. SCP-1533 is not telepathic or clairvoyant. It relies on anticipating caricatures of behavior prior to an event. So the success rate of its entities, defined by the prey's receptiveness to the entity's manipulations, now hovers at percent. Although this rate has steadily grown since recording began, as SCP-1533 functions by essentially consolidating the more deplorable aspects of the human social sphere into discrete personalities, Foundation agents are strongly encouraged to upset any schemes the collective might use to visit distress on innocent subjects. Description of entity behaviors and physical appearance is provided by embedded agents ordered to act as inconspicuously as the function allowed. Given name, personality scheme at a AJ, a male in his early 20s distinguished by a tattoo on the neck and wearing a white fitted cap. AJ appears in house party and rave party events. He will attempt to befriend the subject. Early instances of AJ were considered overbearing and bothersome by targets, and could not find common ground to build necessary rapport. Since the expanding of its knowledge base, and the refining of its social instincts. AJ will claim to have a friend or sibling in the target's hometown, campus, workplace to facilitate conversation. The entity is designed to captivate the most targets in the shortest amount of time. The tattoo is symbolic of event where AJ was able to infatuate a pair of college-aged females and markedly strain their friendship in a single night. Roger Roger appears as a male in his mid-twenties with a poorly figure and beard. The entity is seen only in house party and community gathering scenarios. Roger assumes an unkempt appearance to the extent that alienates a substantial margin. Given Roger's role as the collective's order, a guest's aversion to its appearance and the subject matter of its views serves as a challenge to its persuasive power. The entity has repeatedly expressed fascistic views on the inherent inferiority of women, the right of powerful persons to subjugate the weak, the existential loneliness of human life, and the impossibility of love in a deterministic universe. But in an eloquent and authoritative manner, persons with minority views will gravitate to Roger and have contributed to the creation of a small assembly of followers at each event. After reducing two members of a community poetry class to tears with a false childhood memory, 
Recent instances of Roger have been seen wearing stained clothing and bearing unusually large facial port wine stained birthmark. Donna. Donna appears as an attractive female in its mid-twenties. Donna is tasked with the seduction of males, and on occasion females. In party scenarios, the entity's hands are adorned with rings for each relationship it has jeopardized. Current count is Jace. Jace is a male in his late teens that targets party guests who feel uncomfortable in social situations. As anxious and visibly troubled guests are infrequently seen in party scenarios, instances of Jace are rare, but exact the greatest emotional toll on their targets. The entity operates by sympathizing with the target, claiming to have the same problem, through strategic use of sideways glances to an unspecified person or party, making statements laden with double meanings, an ubiquitous smirk, and laughing at inappropriate times. The entity is able to both simultaneously put its target at ease and stoke its anxieties. Recent instances of the entity have been seen wearing a black wristband following its befriending a male depressive that had been begrudgingly taken along to an apartment party by local friends. Event. The entity soothed its target's anxieties by claiming it had recently struggled with depression as well, and reassuring the subject that nothing you can do can ever be as bad as the fear of actually doing it. Upon discovering Jay's recording the target on its personal phone during a stilted attempt to be outgoing. The subject was discovered sometime later in the condo bathroom self-harming with a razor blade. Ryan. Ryan is a college-aged male that is the consolidation of past guests' humorous sensibilities into a single personality. Ryan often hovers on the periphery of friend groups and congregations in parties, classes, other events, making jokes of a lewd and obscene nature. Honing its comedic timing and delivery has garnered the entity minor notoriety in areas local to the event and on the internet. The foundation has intercepted YouTube videos depicting Ryan performing jokes and skits. Parody site Where is Ryan San Diego? Started by Brooklyn native following a book club event hijacked by the entity. Event to perform an impromptu routine was promptly shut down after the webmaster declared his intent to track down the entity and introduce him to New York comedy scene. Sean. Sean is a belligerent, physically aggressive male of university age that manifests in house party and rave scenarios. As physical altercations at SCP-1533 events are exceedingly rare, the behavioral data relegated to this entity has been slow to come. The entity has provoked three separate confrontations, the latter of which resulted in a single guest concussed on the floor and the contacting of authorities. The entity was initially observed to only engage with victims erratically, eschewing any particular style or technique. Recent instances of this individual will question physically imposing and inebriated guests if they are in fact involved in any martial art or defensive discipline, and ask them to demonstrate techniques. Foundation agents are strongly advised to prevent the Sean individual from conferring with skilled combatants. Tiffany, a distressed female in her late teens appearing in house party scenarios, Tiffany is the consolidation of all displays of anguish, anxiety, sorrow, regret and affliction SCP-1533 has witnessed. Tiffany functions symbiotically with the David entity in order to fulfill their specific roles. The entity follows a set route of behaviors over the course of an event. The first third of the function is spent befriending choice guests that appear most desirous of her and or exhibiting signs of latent anger, insecurity, should such guests prove rare. Tiffany will exploit the protective instincts of specific guests instead to provoke the intended violence. In the second third the entity will disappear for upwards of an hour with a David individual into a closed bedroom or bathroom. In the latter third, Tiffany will be found crying in a conspicuous location, claiming she had been sexually assaulted by David in the time she was away. 
Reactions from concerned guests have ranged from contacting the authorities to inflicting severe bodily harm on David. David. David is a specific entity modeled after a pain fetishist discovered by SCP-1533 in a rape party. Scenario. David derives pleasure from the pain inflicted on it in its dual role with Tiffany. In the instances that the entity is detained by the authorities, the being serves as reconnaissance in the outside world. Assimilation of procedural protocol by local police and exposure to the surrounding city at large has greatly magnified the intelligence's input of data. David will inexplicably disappear exactly the morning following being taken to a local station. Foundation agents are to administer Class A amnesiacs to relevant persons upon confirmation of a David appearance in any given scenario. Officers Brady and Barstow, modeled after the data collected by the Dave entity when it is apprehended by authorities. Officers Brady and Barstow have made a single appearance to date during event a house party scenario, claiming to have been called to the scene due to noise complaints. The individuals were able to deceive the assembly into believing they were real officers through diction and confidence in procedure. As with all SCP-1533 individuals, it is unknown how the intelligence was able to secure authentic PD uniforms and the standard issue Beretta 92F given to officers in the county. Originally amicable and sympathetic with the plight of party guests, the officers offered the party-goers an ultimatum. Should they keep the noise level down and be allowed to remain on the premises, the party may continue. Though an unusual request, guests were receptive and the scenario continued as planned. It is speculated by the Foundation the officers harbor the intelligence's sadistic impulse as what followed could not have possibly been modeled after any previous social interactions. By EMT, officers Brady and Barstow barred access to the master bedroom after handcuffing ten guests to the head of the bed and forced them to play a variation of a Russian roulette with a nearly fully loaded 357 S&W Magnum revolver. Guests were forced to record the scene on the personal phone and send the recordings to family and friends of victims. Agent was able to successfully gain access to the master bedroom and authorized to use deadly force. Officers Brady and Barstow were killed in the ensuing firefight, severing the master link between them and subordinate entities, rendering them comatose. Amnesiacs were administered to victims and recordings were intercepted in time. The collective of SCP-1533 were contained and transported to nearest facility for detainment. Entities regained consciousness in a week's time. Plus Addendum 1533-201. Close Addendum. Addendum 1533-201. SCP-1533 now foregoes all pretense of friendliness when consorting with human beings, as D-Class are informed of entities' deceitful capacity. Recent attempts to foment unrest in the containment site through D-Class subjects have been met with failure. As of 12, 12, subjects have been assaulted by the entities for attempting to exit the containment chamber early the knowledge of its game being found out, and the challenge of ingratiating itself yet again to subjects it has harmed, has taught SCP-1533 how to feign remorse and compassion with a formidable persuasion. As of, all offers have been rebuffed and communication has been disallowed between personnel and the collective. SCP-1533 has since attempted the smuggling of various media to its containment cell through Foundation operatives, it is believed the phenomenon can absorb behavior through other forms of exposure, since it has frequently requested the perusal of literature and the viewing of films as a suggested recreational activity to pass the time. Recent containment breaches have involved the transcribing of a manifesto by the directing intelligence through its monthly allotted D-class. Personnel are to refuse the supplying of pen and paper to SCP-1533's containment cell.
Foundation researchers have also suggested the constant playback of selected scenes from the 1976 film Taxi Driver, depicting the life of a socially stunted cab driver struggling to relate with fellow human beings, as a means by which to retard the intelligence's behavioral growth. Confirmation Pending Pro 5 Review